In this nitty gritty basics, let's play live stream. We're gonna be playing it, I Love Maj. We're gonna be talking about exercising Charleston options. So we're gonna be spending time in their exercise room. So if you're new to the game, you're gonna love this episode. Even if you're an intermediate player, or even if you're an advanced player, I think there's always something new to learn. So I hope that you enjoy it. I wanna say thank you so much for watching my videos and for being here during these live streams. I wanna give a special shout out to Joanne and Lori. Thank you so much for becoming fanatics. Welcome to channel membership. Also, I want to say thank you to moderators who will help monitor the chat today. The format is nitty gritty. So that means we won't do any socializing. We'll just be talking about the nitty gritty topic, exercising Charleston options. And if you prefer gameplay with commentary and a little bit of socialization, shenanigans and whatnot, join us on Friday nights at 6 p.m. Eastern time for Simply Social Let's Play live streams. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen and we'll get started with the presentation on exercising Charleston options. Hi, Marilyn, welcome. Okay, here we go. Let me share my screen. Uh, let's see, this one, here we go. Okay, exercising Charleston options. So, uh, Evelyn, thank you so much for being here. Okay, here we go. Exercising Charleston options. Everything is hard before it's easy. And that applies to American Mahjong. I think American Mahjong is one of the hardest versions to learn. It is complicated. It's not, it's not that it's complicated, really. It's that it's complex. It is not easy. It is not go fish. And it's not rummy. It's similar to rummy. But there are a lot of interconnecting, challenging, decision-making opportunities when you play Mahjong. It's not easy, especially when you're first learning. It can be very confusing. So we're going to talk about the Charleston, which is a really big part of the game. And there's a lot of power in the Charleston. So let's talk about the game. When you play Mahjong, typically it's just a pick and discard fate, a pick and discard game, and you meld. You you claim a discard, make a meld. First player to complete a hand wins. But there's so much more involved because you've got to focus on hand development. And with American Mahjong, that means you have to make the tiles match one of the hands on the card. That takes time and it takes a lot of decision making. With the Charleston, it's a big part of the game. That's why I have it as a big pie because you can really set yourself up for success going into the next part of the game, which is the play. And then the last part of the game is the pay. So the Charleston is the biggest chunk of the game. It takes at least half the time. And the whole purpose is to exponentially improve your dealt hand. This is where the transformation happens. And then when you get to the play where you pick and discard one tile at a time, that's where the refinement happens. So the transformation happens during the Charleston, which is why it's such an important part of the game. Incidentally, I have seen a recent trend in social media. Let me go full screen here. I've seen a trend in social media where groups have decided to omit the second Charleston as a house rule. They're doing themselves a disservice. If you're playing in a group who just omits the second Charleston, you are doing yourself a disservice because people change their minds mid Charleston. I do it all the time. 
many people think that the second Charleston is a waste of time, but it's not. It is not a waste of time. When you're playing American Mahjong, this is when you're going to transform your hand and you're going to do it in a series of passes, three tiles in each pass. If you consider that like three picks from the wall, then it makes sense as to why there's so much power there because you're going to do these passes up to seven times. Right across left, that's nine tiles. Left across right, that's another nine tiles. Now, the last pass of each Charleston, you can pass blind. So it's up two. And then, of course, you have the optional cross, which is another three tiles. So if fully exercised, that would be seven times three. That's 21 tiles. Consider that equal to 21 picks from the wall. That's half a wall. So by omitting the second Charleston, let's see, I need to, I need to find a good, a good, what do you call it? A saying, not a saying, but a, a colloquialism, I guess, because the one that comes to mind is you're cutting off your nose to spite your face. You're cutting off your nose to spite your face. We don't want you to spite your face. Doing the Charleston is important. It's very powerful, and I'm going to show you. I'm going to prove it to you in this presentation. All right, we're going to go back to it. Lecture concluded. So here we go. Charleston options. We're going to talk about how to get started, how to pass defensively, when to pass blind, when to stop round two, when to take risks and how to measure results. So this is probably gonna be a more lengthy presentation and we'll still have time for gameplay with commentary where I can demonstrate all of this, but this is important. So buckle up and watch this again, especially if you're new to the game. Okay, so how to get started. The purpose of the Charleston is to expedite hand development. You're going to accelerate the transformation because you're going to get up to 21 tiles in three passes. Mahjong for expediting hand development, that means you're going to improve your dealt hand by participating in the Charleston, whereby players exchange up to 21 tiles in seven passes. And it's up to because the last pass of each Charleston and in the optional cross, you can pass up to three tiles. So you're not always going to get 21, but if you exercise it fully, if, if it just happens to work out that way, you could potentially get up to 21 tiles, which is equivalent to 21 picks from the wall. I mean, really, if you multiply that by four, that's a whole wall with all four players participating. It's like an extra wall in the game. The Charleston is like an extra wall in the game. Think of it that way. So if your group omits the second Charleston, you're basically cutting out a half a wall from the game. As far as, you know, uh, um, an equal sort of comparison. So when you get started, you're going to get your dealt hand and the tiles are going to be random. You're going to have either a widespread where you have single tiles throughout. Like in this case, we have all single tiles. Sometimes you're going to get multiples. If you have multiples, start there because American Mahjong is a game of multiples. But in this case, we have odds, lots of odds. Oh, no, there is a multiple right here. Seven dot pair. So I would start with the seven dot. And you can see that we have lots of odds. We would have maybe three these three tiles to pass. Green dragon, two bam, four dot. And then we would just collect dots. Oh, not dots, odds. Odds. We're going to collect odds. Sorry, I may be a little off because I have a headache. So bear with me if my mind skips a beat. Okay. Now, if you don't have multiples, like in this particular case, 
you're going to choose a category that matches the predominant pattern in the hand. So in this, we have a lot of two, four, six, eight, a lot of two, four, six, eight. We could maybe play like numbers with twos, let's say. Like numbers with twos could be a potential in here because we have three twos. But evens is the predominant pattern. So if you ever get tiles where you have no multiples, you might even hear somebody say, I have nothing. That is not true. You will always have something to work with. You get started with the predominant pattern if you don't have multiples. If you have multiples, pair Pong Kong, that's where you start. And then you gather tiles and choose a category that will use most of your tiles supporting the multiple. So those are the two ways to get started. Target multiples, gather supporting tiles, play a category that uses most of your tiles, or choose the predominant pattern and play a category that uses multi most of your tiles. And then when a multiple forms, that is when you're going to reassess. So here is another example where we have a lot of, we could maybe do, let's say two, four, six, eight, but there's no two. That's a gap. So I'd probably play five, six, seven, eight, or six, seven, eight, nine. So we're kind of in between. There's a gap, no two. Even though there's two, four, six, eight potential, there's no two. So you gather until a multiple forms. So here we have two multiples now, eight, crack, seven, bam. Those are consecutive. So I would focus on consecutive runs so that you can use both of the multiples, seven, eight consecutive tiles. I would hold six, seven, eight, nine. If you have mixed suits, gather four tiles, four numbers around your multiple. In this case, it would be six, seven, eight, nine. And that would optimize your potential to gather enough fodder to pick a hand eventually. Okay, now here, this this hand, this is how it transformed after the Charleston. Seven, eight, seven, eight, sixth hand down under consecutive run. This player could also maybe play the concealed hand under news. News with eight, seven, eight. Uh, so the idea is to gather. And then when you run out of discards, that's when you're going to whittle down your options and free up more discards to keep going in the Charleston. So when you're going through the Charleston, you want to focus at the category level. I know there's that urge inside to pick a hand right away, but you do not have to pick a hand really until you run out of discards. You just need to focus on a category and gather every tile that can be used in the category. When you run out of discards, that's when you look at the hand level and free up tiles so you can continue with the Charleston and gather more tiles to support the strength of the hand. Keep tiles that can be used in the entire category, regardless of suit. When you run out of discards, reduce your options based on the strength to continue passing. If you're in between, choose the option where you have no gaps. So for example, we had a hand displayed a few, a minute or two ago where we had two, four, six, eight options but no two, that would be a gap. So I would play four, five, six, seven, five, six, seven, eight, six, seven, eight, nine, where there's no gaps. Like in that case, I think it was six, seven, eight, nine. If you're playing a, a category where you have a gap, you're going to be swimming upstream and you could even end up in a trouble spot. You could end up in a rip tide <laughs> if you're not careful. Okay, so how to pass defensively. Let's talk about focusing on your own hand development as the priority, but also thinking about what you're giving away because you're not just throwing it away. These are not just trash tiles. These tiles are going to an opponent. So you want to mitigate the risk in the passes as best you can. There's going to be some level of risk in every pass but you do the best you can to mitigate the risk because you don't want to help your opponent develop their hand while you're developing yours. So here are the best to worst case scenarios when you're passing. A different numbered tile from each suit 
is the first one. That's the best kind of pass. A single winter dragon with mixed numbered and mixed suited tiles is the second best. Then we get more and more risky as we go down this list. All the same category, all the same suit, white dragons and flowers try to pass those very rarely. And then like numbers or pairs and try to pass those as a last resort. Another equivalent to like numbers would be passing two wins in the same pass or two dragons in the same pass. Those are also very risky to do. So you just wanna do your best to mitigate the risk. So in this case, we have three dot pair, we have a two dot pair. So probably two, three, four, five would be ideal, but we also have some two, four, six, eight in here or three, six, nine. There's three, six, nine potential. You can't keep it all. So in this case, I would maybe pass four crack, seven bam with an eight dot. And that way we can focus on either two, three, four of some kind, or maybe three, six, nine. Okay, is everybody with me? Can you guys, I hope you guys can hear me. Test, test. Okay. I just tested it in my iPad. I can hear. All right, here we go. So I'm just showing you the different kinds of, of passing that you could do uh, there. Okay, good. All right. Now let's talk about an example here. After you identify the strength of the hand and gather supporting tiles, pass, pass as defense defensively as possible with your remaining tiles. So here we're back to the odd hand. Thank you, Diane. Okay, so we have a seven dot pair. We're going to probably play odds. So there are the odd tiles highlighted here. And then we have discards, the two bam, one crack and four dot. So that would be one way that you can pass. Here's another example where, uh, where we got a nine bam pair. So maybe we can focus on big odds, five, seven, nine, and let the little odds go. So the one dot, three crack, and the six bam or six dot can go. So now here's the next evolution of this hand. We have a five dot pair now, five dot, seven dot, nine bam, all multiples. So we could maybe pass, let's say, the one bam, the west. And I would probably discard that green dragon in this case and keep the five crack. So you want to keep as many of the tiles that you can use in the category as possible. We definitely can't use the west because there are no wins in the odd category. And the green dragon is only helpful if it's in one suit in this case. If we have a dragon, it would be better to have a red dragon, not a green dragon, and maybe play the fifth hand down under odds. But that's the wrong dragon. So I'd probably keep the five crack and pass the, the green dragon instead. It's okay to pass a single dragon with a single wind. That's not bad. So now the hand progressed a little more. We have still discards that we can let go of two dot four dot six dot we're playing some kind of odd hand big odds five seven nine oh look there's that a uh, hand that we could focus on here that would be the six hand down four flowers pair pair five seven dot and then pounds of nines there's no gaps for that hand and here we're we have still tiles that we're able to pass Green dragon, three crack, one dot, five, seven, nine, nine is what we would focus on targeting the multiples. So let's see. I think that's here's what we ended up with odds six dash two, five, seven, nine, nine. So in this case, we have five discards, but we have a hand with no gaps, which is great. A hand with no gaps. That's what you want at the end of the Charleston. Let's talk quickly about when to pass blind. The first priority is to develop your hand. 
your hand comes first. Then you do the best you can with what you have left over with passing. You want to mitigate the risk because, again, those tiles are going to go to your opponents. There will always be some level of risk in every pass. Your challenge is to mitigate that risk. If your hand has progressed to the point where you have less than three tiles or you have tiles that create a risky pass, consider passing blind. If you're in between, don't pass blind. Instead, choose a hand that uses most of your multiples. If you don't have multiples, most of your tiles. If there are no gaps for one of the hands, choose that hand and let the other one go. Any hand with gaps, let it go and keep going. Keep going with uh, passing fully because you want to optimize your potential to get more keepers for your developing hand. If you're committed to one hand with four or more discards, or if you're committed to one hand and you have a gap with, let's say, three discards, still don't stop the Charleston. Pass normally on the second left. If you run out of discards for the uh, across pass, you can sacrifice a tile. If you're playing a jokerless hand, like a single, singles, it's a single in your hand, like let's say you're playing the first odd hand and you have singles three, five, seven, let one of those tiles go because you could always pick one of those up in the pick and discard phase of the game, or maybe get yourself to a ready position and just declare Mahjong when it's discarded. If you're not playing a jokerless hand, pass a tile that will not leave a gap. If the sacrifice was adverse, recover during the pick and discard phase of the game. And if it's, if it's not a jokerless hand, you're probably going to be able to use a joker maybe even to help you with that block. If you're committed to one hand with two or more, and you have only two or more discards, or if you have all risky discards, stop the Charleston. The number of tiles you pass blind is situational, but pass as few blind as possible. I'm sorry, this is, this is passing blind. We're not at stopping the Charleston yet, sorry. A risky pass may be worth it if you're set. If your hand is really well developed, it's going to be worth it to pass blind. If you're two tiles away from a ready hand, regardless, pass the most innocuous tiles because you don't know what you're going to be adding to your pass because you're passing blind. You're not supposed to look at the tile, although there's no rule if you do peek at it. You might get criticism from your opponents, but anyhow. All right. Now, this, I believe, is where we're talking about stopping the Charleston. Hold on a second. I think I need have an error here. We're just going to keep going. I think I need to change this title to stopping the Charleston, maybe. Pass as defensively as possible. Stay flexible. It's important, but eventually you'll need to whittle down your options. So the idea here is if you are tempted to stop the Charleston, because you can't decide because you're in between, you're just delaying the inevitable. You're going to have to make that decision very shortly anyway. Why not make the decision now? Because if you stop the Charleston, you're going to be denying yourself tiles that could have helped you develop your strongest hand. So let's talk about this example. Here's like numbers number two. We have a pair of two cracks and a pair of red dragons, pair of flowers. So we're going to maybe play two like numbers with twos. We have all the twos. We have no four. There could be some potential here for evens, but we have no four. I wouldn't stop the Charleston here. We can pass the six dot, the eight bam, and one of the red dragons, because in the like number category, we don't need a pair of red dragons. So I wouldn't stop the Charleston. If you're thinking, well, what happens if I get a four? Well, then you can, you can recover 
and change gears if you get a four, but that's a big if. You want to make decisions based on the current strength of the hand. And that doesn't include gaps. A gaps would be a weakness. So I would not stop the Charleston here. You keep going. Now, here's another example of a like number hand, like numbers with fives. Here we have almost all keepers. We would have to discard two crack, four crack, six crack, eight crack, two, four, six, eight, all one, one category. That's a bit risky all in one suit. So it's one suit and it's all one category evens. I would stop the Charleston because I wouldn't want to pass that risky because we still have to further develop the hand. It's not strong enough to, for that level of risk. I would stop the Charleston and then do, do the best I can gathering tiles for like numbers. So Let's talk now about when to stop round two. Sorry for the confusion on some of those previous slides. Okay, when to stop round two. If you're in between, don't stop the Charleston. Choose a hand that uses most of your multiples, or if you don't have multiples, choose a category that uses most of your tiles until the multiple forms, and then you're gonna reassess. But either way, don't stop the Charleston. Don't straddle categories or hands. Pick the strongest one and keep going. If you're committed to one hand with four or more discards or you're committed to one hand and you have a gap, let's say with three discards, don't stop the Charleston. Norm, pass normally on the second left. If you run out of discards, you can sacrifice a tile. Just like before, if you're playing jokerless, pass a single tile. If you're not playing a jokerless hand, pass a tile that won't leave a gap because you can recover in the next phase of the game. If you're committed to one hand and you have only one or two discards, or if you're committed to a pair hand and you have three or fewer discards, regardless of gaps, stop the Charleston. If you want to participate in the optional cross and you have three tiles, negotiate for two. And the reason I say that is because a lot of players based on experience will not pass to a player who stops the Charleston. So expect that your opponent will decline an optional across with you and don't take it personally. It's part of the game. So if that happens, if you were to say that you want just two tiles, then you might not have pushback as much as if you say you have three. So you want to mitigate the risk of conflict. And that's why I say negotiate for two. Here's an example. We're at that like number hand. I would not stop round two for this. I would keep going and just break up the multiples and go with what I have most of, which would be the twos. So we could pass six BM, eight crack, seven dot. Here's another example. We're playing the single and pair consecutive run hand. We have a pair we don't need and a three BAM. Stop the Charleston and ask for two in the optional cross. You wouldn't want to pass a pair. I wouldn't pass a pair. We have too, too many discards really for a pair hand. If we're playing a pair hand, they're all concealed. So you need to have a really well-developed hand to pass something like a pair because that's very high risk. All right, let's talk about risks a little bit. Here's an example of a hand. We're in between year number one and year number two. If you look at the card, we have a pair of flowers, a joker, a white dragon, two, three paired up, and then we have two, three in dots. We have a pair of nine bams and a four dot. This is an exposable hand either way. The first hand, two, three, let's see, two, let's say we do two dot white dragon with two, three crack pong kong, first, first hand. Or we do the flower hand, the second hand down. That's probably the one I would play. 
let's see here. So we would, we have a gap. We would need a, a three BM in here. So probably I would not, yeah, here, you would not take risks because we're in between. We're in between hands. So we don't want to take risks here. Instead, I would break up the multiple past, let's say, a nine BM with a four dot and maybe let, let's say, the three crack go and keep going. Don't take the risk because it's not well developed. There's a gap, no three BM if we're gonna leverage the flowers. So here's another example of like numbers with eights. We have a gap, no eight dot. We have an east, west, four, and six. Those would make a fine pass. So I wouldn't stop anything. I would continue going and pass west with a four and a six or east, either one, it's arbitrary at this point. So there are plenty of tiles to pass. Here's another example. We're in between odds number one and odds number four. We have no nine BAM though. That would be a gap if we play odds number one. If we're playing odds number four, one, three, five dragon, we have a gap, no flowers. So this hand, I would not take the risk. I would not take a risk. I would pass defensively here. I'd probably let a wind go with a seven and a two. Let's see, seven. Oh, I see. We're keeping the seven BAM in case we get a nine. Really, that eight BAM pair is not helpful with a one, five multiple. So that's why I have it broken up here. So break up the eight since we have a one and a five and no six. We could maybe do five, six, seven, eight, but there's no six. Here's another example of odds three dash one, three dash one, one, three, five mixed suit Kongs. We have like numbers with sevens and a one dot, but we have a hand with no gaps. There are some weaknesses though. The flower, that needs to be a pair, fourth hand down. But here, because the hand is so well developed, I would risk passing like numbers. So the idea is that the further you are, with hand development, the stronger your hand in the Charleston, the greater the risk you can take with your passes. If your hand is not well developed, break things up and pass defensively. But if your hand is well developed like this one, go ahead and pass risky. It's okay. Especially consider that each subsequent pass is probably going to become more and more risky because hopefully you're getting keepers, which means you're gonna have fewer tiles to let go of, fewer discards, and you have no control over those, although you could potentially break up your hand to pass defensively, but you want you, your own hand development should come first. So think about these things when you're passing. Here's another example. We have consecutive run number two dash two, two suits. Pung Kong, Pung Kong, five, six, seven, eight, cracks, bams. We have a pair of fours we can break up. Or we could pass a pair with a wind, pass two wins with, a, with one four. In this case, because we have a joker and we have a hand with no gaps where we can use jokers, I would risk it. I would pass two wins in this case because the hand has no gaps in three multiples. Five, six, seven, eight, Pung Kong, Pung Kong. We just need really one good pick for that six crack. Maybe two good picks because that needs to be a calm. But still, you can use jokers for this. So because of the hand, the type of hand that it is, and the fact that we have three multiples and no, and, um, no gaps, then the risk will be worth it to pass those two wins. So when you saw the list of the passes from low to high risk, consider that, that those are guidelines, they're not rules. So if your hand is well developed, you can break those guidelines if you have strength in your hand to withstand taking that risk. So it's all about risk mitigation, risk assessment, and risk mitigation, both. You assess first, then you mitigate 
based on the decision that you've made for your hand. And then you just move forward and do the best you can as you go. Here's another example of evens number one or evens number six. We could play two, four, six, eight, Pong Kong, Pong Kong in one suit, or we can play the concealed hand. But that would mean that we're going to discard a two dot and a seven and an eight dot, all one suit. In this case, it would be worth it because we again have no we have no gaps. And not only that, but we have one, two, three pair, three multiples in here. There's a little bit of weakness with the eight crack or with the uh, eight crack, but we can use jokers there if we play the concealed hand. And then if we play the concealed hand, the red dragon and the flower, those would be really the big weakness that we'd want to look for uh, a good pick on those to decide whether we're going to play this concealed hand or maybe even just switch to the exposable hand where we can use jokers. So in this particular hand with the development that has happened here, I would risk passing seven, eight with a two all in one suit. All right, let's talk about how to measure results after the Charleston. If you have more than four discards, you're likely going to be an underdog. So you're going to go through the Charleston and then count your discards after you look at the results. Do you have a hand or a category that has all useful tiles and how many discards are there remaining? Take a low risk approach if you believe you're an underdog based on the results. If you have no gaps and few weaknesses, then you can change your position to contender. This is when you have four discards. If you have four discards after the Charleston, you're likely going to be a contender. And you can take a moderate risk approach, especially as you expedite hand development. It may be okay to take some of those risks because you only have four discards. If you have two or three really good picks, you could then even be a front runner. If you have four discards after the Charleston, less than four, sorry, less than four discards, fewer than four discards after the Charleston, you're likely a front runner. And that means that you can expedite hand development regardless of risk, push hard, win as fast as you can, because you're likely out in front of your opponents. So you can take those risks if this is your position. So let's look at some examples. Uh, repeat for me when the blind can be used. Blind Passing blind can happen in the last pass of each round. So the first round, right across left, that's when you can pass blind, the first left. Then the second round, if everybody agrees, you can do le left again, then across and right. The last pass of that round is the last right, and that is where you can pass blind. So the last pass of each Charleston, you can pass blind. I hope that helps. Okay, now let's talk about the position for this player. You're welcome, Lori. Thank you again for becoming a Fanatics tier member. That's fantastic. I appreciate your support. All right, so here we have odds number 1-1. One one. We have three crack pair, five crack pair, seven crack pair, nine crack pung. And incidentally, these are all real hands. I didn't make these up. These are actual real hands that have been played. So this would be after the Charleston, we have four discards. So with four discards, really we have an extra discard because if we play odds number one, we only need a pair of nines. So we would be an underdog because we have five discards. Even though we have a hand with no gaps, we have a couple of weaknesses in here. The one crack needs to be a pair and the five crack needs to be a calm. So we need a couple of good picks in here. And with five discards, I would say we're probably an underdog. Here's another example, Winds and Dragons number seven. This is a concealed hand. So you're gonna have to draw really well. But in this case, we have three discards. Oh, actually we have four because we have an extra East. 
So we have four discards. East is extra for the concealed hand. Seven, nine, nine. Four discards means we'd be a contender. We're playing a concealed hand, though, so we're going to have to draw really well and watch the discards. Thankfully, the singles are in hand if we play that concealed hand, so we can use jokers to help us if we draw well and look for joker exchange potential. Here's another example of like numbers number two. We have only two discards. So this would be an example of, of a front runner hand. We could play like numbers with dragons. We have two jokers to help us with the ones. We have a pair of flowers. All we need is a white dragon and one more good pick. So we could even switch to the first hand if we pick a flower and then let the dragons go, let's say, but we would jump down to contender by having that many discards. So think about your hand development and the number of discards, but you also have to consider where you are in the game. This is all right after the Charleston. When you are picking and discarding from the wall, things are going to change a little bit and you're going to be bumping up and back your position based on what happens at the table. And hopefully we'll have opportunities to talk about that when we do gameplay with commentary. Here's another example of a hand. We have one, two, three, four, Pung Kong, Pung Kong, second hand down on the right, two suits. We have three discards and a pair. That's five discards. So you might think, oh, we're an underdog on this one because we have five discards, but no, I would say you're probably a front runner. And here's why. You have three discards plus joker bait, which is a way for you to maybe get a joker in your hand if you play it well and if your opponents are in that area, if, if they're using twos, let's say. Maybe someone's playing a year hand or maybe someone's playing evens or a low consecutive run, little numbers with consecutive run. You might be able to get a joker there. Plus this particular hand, pung kong, pung kong, you can use any number of jokers. So I would say in this case, you would be a front runner and you could push really hard to win quick with this particular hand because we have all multiples in here. We could pung the one, we could pung the three and even kong the two or the four. All we need in here is one good pick and the hand will be set. And that's why you can take risks as a front runner. The smarter you play, the luckier you'll be. Let's go and play Mahjong now at I Love Maj, and I'll talk through all these ideas when we play with robots. I hope you found that helpful. Does anybody have any questions about exercising Charleston options? It's all based on hand development and, and how well the strength of that particular hand do you have gaps do you have weaknesses if so you don't want to pass blind and stop the charleston you want to keep going if you're in between you want to whittle out your options go with the strongest one and keep going all right i'm going to go ahead and we need to work on that presentation i'm going to share my screen because we're now going to play Mahjong here. All right, let's do, um, at I Love Maj, by the way, if you've not, if you're not playing anywhere online or if you've not tried I Love Maj, I invite you to give it a try. I am an affiliate partner there. So if you decide to do a paid subscription after the trial, I will get a small commission. So I just want to say thank you in advance for supporting Maj Life. But also, it is a great place to play. You can play with robots or friends and even strangers and have a great time. They also have a wonderful exercise room with lots of ways for you to build your skills. You can practice making hands on the card. That's going to be really helpful when we get the new card in several weeks. You can also do Charleston practice, which is what we're going to do right now. And then you can also practice identifying a hand based on exposures that they show you. So give this a try and let me know what you think about it.
And when you sign up, use Mosh Life as the promo code to get an extra week for free. All right, let's go into Charleston practice. And we're going to do at least one of these and then we'll do more if you want. But even playing with robots, we're going to have the opportunity to practice with exercising Charleston options. So here we have a nice start. We've got a flower, east-west pair, west pair there, white dragon. We have a one bam, three, four, five, six, eight in cracks with a pair of threes. And then we have a one dot and an eight dot. So if these were your tiles, what would you target? We're just going to start there. What would you target? What what stands out to you here in this dealt hand? Put it in chat for anybody who wants to participate. What would you target? There is no right or wrong, but there is good, better, best. Wish I knew so much to learn. Yes. Okay. Well, Lori, based on the tiles that you see here, what would you, what would you be, which category would you likely want to focus on with these styles? Is there a predict, is there a pattern in here that stands out to you? Because when you recognize these patterns, and you recognize how to deter how to identify the strength of a hand, it makes the decision making super easy. It the decision making the decision making is simplified when you target cracks. Keep the three. Okay, that's great, and I would definitely do that. When I look at the dealt hand, the first thing that I see I look for are multiples. So in this case, yes, we have a pair of threes. Good. Sue. Excellent. Yeah. Three crack pair right there. So Lori and Sue. Yep. Start with the three. We have three. And then you look at the rest of your tiles and you think to yourself of these other tiles, how many of them can I keep to play a particular category? And in this case, we do have some little odd potential with ones and a five, but we also have four, five, six in here which is consecutive run, four, five, six. And there's even a wind and dragon hand that we could play with east and west, and that would use another multiple. So target multiples. We could play east and west with a run, three, four, five. So really, the six can go. So by targeting the multiples, the east and the three, play the second hand down on the right. In this case, because the multiples are specific like this, it's pointing to one particular hand. So this is unusual. You usually don't have to pick a hand right away. But in this case, we have a hand with no gaps, east and west with a run. You'd pass 1.88. Okay, that's a little bit risky. I mean, you could do that, 1.88. But I think it would be better to let the six go because if you leverage multiples with the three crack in the West, you don't need the six, which can help you mitigate the risk of passing like numbers, which is almost as risky as passing a pair. Passing like numbers is almost as risky as passing a pair. The reason is because there are like numbers all over the card. 40, I think it's 44% of the hands, nearly half of the hands on the card use like numbers. So I very rarely will pass like numbers. I would pass 186 and focus on 345, maybe east and west with 345. So let's see what happens. We've got a west, that would be a keeper. And we have east and west with a run. East and west with a run, second hand down on the right. So here we have a white, the flower I typically don't pass ever. 
And then same with white dragons. I typically don't pass white dragons because they're a dual tile. You can use it as a zero or as a dragon. So I typically don't do that. But we do have tiles we can pass without touching our keepers. One, eight, seven. Okay, here we picked up an east. So now we have east and west with a run. I would definitely play that second hand down on the right. And we still have tiles we can pass without getting to the risky ones, the flower and the white dragon. But we have a hand here with no gaps. There are, there's two weaknesses though. The four crack needs to be a pair. The five crack needs to be a Kong. But we can use jokers for the five crack in the east. All we need in here really to feel a little bit more confident is the four crack. One tile. If we can get one good keeper, we can run hard and fast and push to win. Okay, we have a north. So we have almost news. If we had a south, we might be able to switch to like the first hand under wins. So here is an opportunity to stop the Charleston. This is, we did right across left. So we are now at that place where we can decide if we want to stop the Charleston. We're in between hands. We could either play east and west with a run, second hand down on the right, or we could play the first hand, news, all wins. And by the way, those hands, you can use any number of jokers there. I call those hands of least resistance because they're relatively indestructible. You can use jokers, even if people discard those wins in the beginning of the game. You can still win because you can use jokers. So you might think, okay, if we keep going, we're going to have to pass a two bam with a white dragon. That's going to be a bit risky. And that is true. That will be a, a little bit risky. But I think that it would be worth it. And I think that we're close enough to east and west with a run. I would probably let the north go. Actually, let's keep the north because we could maybe play that fifth hand down. I would keep going, though. I still wouldn't stop the Charleston. I would risk passing the white dragon even with the two because we're in between two really or three strong hands, all with multiples, really. So I would keep going and risk passing that white dragon. If we get a south, we could maybe move to that uh, fifth hand down under wins. Okay, we did not get any keepers, but we do have tiles we can pass. It's a little bit risky, but remember I was telling you during the Charleston, every subsequent pass is going to likely grow in risk. And that's what's happened here because we have all keepers except those three tiles. So if we want to pass fully, and in this case we have to because it's the cross pass, then there's going to be some risk in there and that's got to be okay. There will always be some risk. Okay, so we don't have any keepers and that's fine because we can pass. You might think to yourself though, why not keep the red dragon? If we kept that red dragon, to use with three, four, five of some kind, we would have six discards, a pair and a pung. So I would not keep it. That would require us to throw away the strength of our hand, east, west. That's stronger than the three, four, five because we have a pair and a pung. I would just let that red dragon go as pretty as it is. Okay. Oh, look, we got the six back. But we're going across now. This is where you can decide, do you want to pass three or maybe mitigate the risk and pass just two? We're in between the first hand, the fifth hand or second hand on the right and the fifth hand down under wins. We're in between three different hands. I would say if this were my hand, I'd probably pass two. I don't, because we're in between, I would not risk passing like numbers. We're in between. I was hoping that during the Charleston, those last two passes, we might either get a four crack or a south, 
to help decide which hand to play, but we're still kind of in between. If I had to pick a hand, I'd probably play east and west with a run. Okay, now here we have two, we have three discards, and then we're in between the rest of the way. So I would say we have, let's see, if we were to play east and west with a run, we have three discards plus a pair that we don't need. That's called Joker Bait. We might be able to get jokers out of that. And I'll, I'll hopefully be able to share that when we play with robots. But in this case, I would say that we're probably, I would say we're probably a contender for this game because we have a hand with no gaps and we have joker bait with the eight. If we were to play the news hand with flowers, I would say we would be more of a underdog because we have a gap no south and that needs to be a calm. And then we would have two piece, two joker bait opportunities there, the three crack and the eight dot. So we still have an option if we keep that north and the flower. So I would say all in all, we'd probably be a contender for either hand. Okay, now, do you guys want to do one more Charleston modeling or should we play with robots? So if you want to play with bots and just play fully, put in put bots in chat. Or if you want to do this one more time, put do it again. Bots, bots. Okay. Play with bots. Okay. That's what we're going to do. So play with bots. Okay, here we go. So we're going to play with bots and we're going to play with intermediate bots on this game. You could play with different levels. Uh, standard would be beginner. Intermediate would be maybe a bot who's had lessons and they're comfortable with the game. And then advanced would be experienced. So we're going to play with intermediate. Okay, here we go. So we have a joker, a white dragon, two, four, five, eight, and bams, one, six, and cracks, three, four, five, eight, nine, and dots with a pair of threes. What would you target and what category would you play? Tell me what you would target and what category you would play here. I'll give you like three, five seconds. And then we'll move on. Target multiples. So whatever we do, three, three, six, nine, focus on dots. Three, six, nine is, has definite potential. Three, six, nine, right there, three, six, nine. But there's also three, four, five, six. If you can play, if you're in between categories and one of the categories is consecutive run, focus on consecutive run because of the flexibility in that category. In this case, we, we can play both and see which comes in because we have discards. Marilyn says consecutive run. I would be more likely to focus on consecutive run. We could maybe even use that white dragon if we happen to get a flower. But we have no flower, so we've got to play with the strength that we have. I wouldn't pick a hand. We're just going to gather because we're in between 369 and 3456. You never win. <laughs> three, four, 369 is a tough category for sure. It's not very flexible. There's a three. Now, we did get a red dragon. Let me just show you a particular hand that we could maybe play. 369. It's called knitted right there. Three dot, six crack, nine dot with a red dragon. This would be the second hand from the bottom under 369. There is potential there. But let's see if we can still pass and hold on to three, four, five, or three, four. Let's see. 
here's three, four, five. We would have to pass these three tiles. That I would not do. That's very risky. I think what I would do in this case is probably hold the dragon, the red or the green dragon, and let something go. We have three, four, five, nine, three, six, nine potential, three, four, four, five. I would probably let the five bam go. This is a little bit risky, but even if you think about it this way, that would be even more risky. I would not do that. So five, eight dragon, and we can do three, four, five, six, or we can do three, six, nine. So let's see what happens. Well, we've got a six and a three, a new multiple formed with a three crack. So we have here three crack, three, six, nine. I probably would focus on three, six, nine. Good call, Lori. Good job. Three, six, nine of some kind. So let's see. We can pass two bam. Let's say five dot with a green dragon. I don't want to be left with two fours, though. I would probably keep the two and pass the four bam. So then we have four bam, five dot, green dragon, and we're left with a two dot, a two bam and a four dot. Just in case we get keepers. And we did. We got a nine bam. Look at the third hand down under three, six, nine. Three, six, pair, pair, three, six, pung, pung, kong, nine. We do have another multiple in here, though. Two bam pair. And we have two fours. So we have to decide. This is where you have to decide if you want to stop the Charleston. So if you would stop the Charleston here, put the word stop. Okay, Lori says, my first coach lived 369, so it seemed like we went for that often. Oh, I think it's a really tough category because there are two numbers in between each of the numbers used in that category. It's not very flexible. Okay, so would you, if you would stop the Charleston, write stop. If you would keep going, write go. And I'll give you just if, like five seconds. Stop or go. It looks pretty good, and we have four discards, but we have a pair, and we have like numbers. Go, go, go. Okay, good. Yep, I would definitely keep going. And I would not, I'd break up the two and pass the four, uh, but I would not, I would not pass two fours and I would not pass a pair. I would not take the risk because we don't, we're in between hands. If you're in between, you need to mitigate risk. If you're in between, we're in between the second hand from the bottom and the third hand down. Second hand from the bottom, which would be three dot six crack nine dot red dragon so there's one two three four five tiles but i think the better option is the third hand down because it would use two multiples look how many more tiles we have towards that hand therefore i would probably pass the dragon keep the nine so we're playing some kind of 369 and we mitigate risk because we're we're in between. Right now, really, that third hand down is probably the best I the best option. Okay, we didn't get any keepers. So I probably pass the twos. So they're in two different kind of break them up between passes. Lori said, I understand. OMG. Woohoo! Okay, now let's see. We have a green dragon, two crack eight dot, let's say, or maybe the seven bam would be better here. We're looking for three, six, nine. Okay, we didn't get any keepers, but we did pick up that that red dragon again. So we might as well keep it. And we have tiles we can pass. So north one with an eight. That's an awesome pass right there. Little number, middle number, even odd with a win. That's the best pass you can do. Okay, here's how we ended up. We have 
four discards and two potential hands. One hand is the strongest, third hand down. We have three dot, six dot, three crack, six bam, or six crack, nine bam needs to be a Kong. I would say we probably are an underdog at the moment because technically if we were to play that hand, third hand down, we would have six discards. We're kind of in between. So I would say we're an underdog on this one, but that can change very quickly. Let's see what happens. So I'd say we're an underdog right now. We're going to keep an eye on how things go and we could bump up or bump back. Right now we need to take a low risk approach to the game until we improve the hand. So at the moment we can't call for anything except I suppose we could call for one of the threes. I would rather wait. We're just going to try to hold off calling for anything. Okay, you're welcome, Lori. You'll be able to watch the repost. It will be up in a little while. Thank you for being here, and thank you again for joining as a channel member. I appreciate you. Okay, we have a five crack, which that kind of looks pretty, but it's not helpful. We're going to let the dragon go. Okay, have a good day. Okay, so we're going to let this one dot go. Of course, we don't, we don't want ones. We're looking for three, six, nine. Six BMs are going down. There's a flower. All right. Well, now we have some potential for a flower hand. We could maybe even switch to like numbers with threes. Let's just keep an eye on it. We have two discards before we really have to pick a hand. We got a three crack. So probably I would do three, six, pair, pair, three, six, crack, pung, pung. So the pairs would be three, six, dot. Let's let the four bam go. The nine bam would need to be a Kong. So we have some work to do. The nine dot would be a discard, but we're going to keep it for a while. Let's see here. Three, three. We might be able to switch to like numbers if we get a three crack. So let's keep that flower for a little bit. We got a three crack Kong now. So this is where I would consider waiting on anything until we could maybe see what happens with a three ban. Three ban. Okay, now here we do not need this nine dot. I would let that go. All right, here now we have a three dot. The, all the white dragons are out. So we're not going to be able to switch to the dragon hand under like numbers. So this red dragon is a discard. Of course, we don't need that green dragon. But we have all the threes and a Kong. My tendency here would be to switch to like numbers with threes. Because we could leverage the Kong. But we don't have to make a decision yet. We can wait. We could always throw it away and go with 369 number three. So we're in between three, six, nine, number three, and like numbers number one. Let's let the red dragon go. We don't need ones. Okay, now there we could call because we have a joker. But the challenge is we need, if we were to play that, we would need to have a pair in our hand. It would put us in at risk because we don't have that three bam paired up. We still have potential for the three, six, nine hand. So I would let it go. If we play three, six, nine with, uh, or if we play like numbers with threes, we could maybe make the three dot our pair and use the three bam for the Kong. That would be safer. Plus we can still maybe play three, six, nine. Yeah, uh, you, Yolanda, you might want to pull that little red dot under the video to the far right so you can catch up. Okay, we keep getting wins. So we're between like numbers with threes and three, six, nine, using the same tiles. 
so somebody got a joker there's our tile nine bam we can't call it though we're not ready because we need to con that for the third hand down under three six nine there's the second one so at this point because of that i would let it go and i would play like numbers because we would need two jokers for that nine bam at this point I would focus on threes. Oh, we just got a, a six dot though. It can change because <laughs> now there's some strength. Three, six, three, six, nine. We have an extra three crack. let's just see what happens you know what we could do we could pung the three pung the six dot three six dot pung pung use the three crack and six crack for the pairs the six crack right now would be the weakness this nine bam is the kicker because there are two out i was kind of hoping one of the robots would call that flower and expose it with a joker we're still in between three, six, nine and like numbers with threes. Okay, now there's a nine crack Kong there. Red dragon we don't need. We got the three bam. I would definitely switch to like numbers. And we can use this six dot. Maybe we can get a joker there. We need to let it go now because we're in the end game. 37 tiles remaining. The end game begins at 40 tiles. Okay, let's let the six dot go and see if we can get a joker. No, nope, nobody wanted it. There's a couple jokers up for grabs. One eight bam is out. Oh, we got a keeper. Three bam. All right, so let's ignore that. I would say that we're maybe a contender here, but we have a, a ways to go. We need another flower. Oh, Joker. Okay, look at, I would say we jumped up to probably contender at this point. We have only one discard. Let's call. We're going to Kong, and now we'll throw the four band. So now we're ready to win on a flower. So we went from underdog to contender to front runner in like three picks. We need a flower. We got it. Mahjong. Woohoo! We got it. Mahjong. Mahjong. Thank you. Thank you. I do like that the everybody, there's like this clapping sound when you Mahjong at I Love Maj. I think that's kind of funny. All right. So let's play again. Although I, I just want to give you a moment to ask if you have any, any uh, hamster dance. I'll do it one time. We're really not supposed to have those shenanigans during the nitty gritty format, but that was exciting because we were an underdog on that one. Any comments on it? Otherwise, we'll just keep on going. We're already in a game. Okay, now this will be interesting because we have a widespread. There are no multiples here. That's why I call it a widespread. This is where you want to look for the predominant pattern. So the predominant pattern here, we have two threes. I would say one, two, three, maybe a year hand because we do have a white dragon. So I would say one, two, three, maybe a year hand. Now that's going to require us to pass five, six, nine. That's super risky right there. I probably would not do that. I would probably keep the five and maybe let the one go. So I'm thinking a year hand. Would you guys play a year hand here or maybe two, three consecutive run? 
we could maybe do that third hand down, for example. But we could also maybe do the concealed news hand. Here's a three. We have tiles we can pass. We have threes. We could play like numbers with threes. Oh, 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 now here, look, like numbers with eights. I would not do that. I would, I would, this is where I would not pass blind because we don't know even what hand we're playing. Instead, I would whittle out my options, the weakest option. One of the options we have is to play news concealed, but we have no east and we have no south. So what I would do is let those go and continue to pass fully. Instead of passing like numbers like that, I would instead let one of my weak options go, news concealed year hand, fourth hand down under the year, and break up those wins so that we can keep passing fully. So we're playing either like numbers with threes or maybe a year hand. There's a three, our first multiple. And we can keep going because we've got four discards. We have plenty of tiles to pass, and we still don't have to pick a hand. So we can pass 1-8 north. That's a fantastic pass. That looks just like the pass we had in the last game. Okay, no keepers. So maybe we do 8-5 with a west. No keepers. We could do 4, let's say 7 Let's see here. We do have a lot of three, four, five in here. It's good to reassess three, four, five, really. Oh, this would be, oh, I would not recommend passing five, seven, nine. That would not be good. No, I would not do that. I would let the four go and then maybe the seven and a nine. Mitigate the risk. Because we still don't know what hand we're playing. We might be able to play the through the like number hand with dragons. And we have three tiles we can pass. This is not too bad. It's a little bit risky. But remember, as you continue the Charleston, the passes are going to get more and more risky. And that's okay. We got a keeper. Three crack. Since we have two pairs of threes, I would let the year hand go and play probably the dragon hand. If we can get the green dragon, we need a green dragon in here, but we have three discards and a hand with no, with one gap. We need a, a single green dragon. I would say we're probably a contender on this one because it's concealed and we're going to have to draw well. We might be very close to being the front runner, a front runner, if we can get a couple of good picks in the first few rounds of discards. So let's see how it goes. We're not calling anything yet. We have a lot of two, three, four here. There's a three, four, three, four, little bit of three, four, three, four. But I would not call that. I think we're closer to like numbers than we are three, four. We could maybe play that six hand down under consecutive run, but we'd have to throw away a pair. I'd rather let the singles go and, and leverage the pair. Seven what? We don't need wins. We don't need that. Remember, we're looking at six threes right now. No, we don't need a one. We got a flower. Okay, now we're down to just two discards. I would say we could probably go to front runner because we've had one, two, three, four picks, and we have two discards. So we're still in the begin game at 82 tiles remaining. We still have to draw. Let's see. We're kind of back to that year hand potential here. We're going to ignore that. I see. I think we're closer to like numbers with threes. We need a green dragon. 
Green Dragon is the only weakness that we have, really. The threes we need to pung. And th this is a concealed hand. We got the Green Dragon. Cool. All right. I'd say we're looking pretty good here. We are definitely a front runner confirmed. We're at 70 tiles remaining. We're just really into the beat, the middle game, third wall. We need one good pick and we'll be ready to win. There it is. So we're ready to win before the very middle of the game. The middle of the game is at 60 tiles remaining and we're at 67 tiles left. So now we're ready to win on a three dot or a three bam. Ready to win. Three dot or three ban or joker. 60 tiles remaining. This is the very middle mark of the game. We got it. Mahjong. There we go. All right, like numbers with threes. All right, let's see if we can play something different. All right, now, look, we have news. We have news. If you, if you have news, consider that a block of four because a Kong is four like tiles, but in with American Mahjong, you can have a block of news. For example, the fourth hand down under the year. That's a, a full block right there. So I would keep the two to see if maybe a year hand comes in, but I would also consider a news hand and I would focus on probably the wind and dragon category, leveraging news. So with that, there is the concealed hand. We could do eight, nine, maybe, or one, two, one, two, eight, nine. We could do four, five. We can't keep it all though. We have to let this some of these go here. I would probably let the edge tiles go and work with the middle numbers for flexibility. So maybe consider playing news concealed. That would probably probably be the best bet. There's a south and we have a three, four. So now we just want to optimize getting the consecutive pungs because we have the east west and we have a pair of souths so to optimize our potential we're going to look for consecutive pungs in mixed suits so we can do one two crack we could do three four bam three crack four bam the four crack can go the four dot probably let's see three four four can go we cannot keep all these tiles. I would not pass like numbers though. Let's see here. The four and the one. Let's see, four, five. We can do four, five, two ways there. Four, five, two ways. So maybe start there. Maybe pass one, two with a four. There we go. So we can do three, four, or four, five. So you want to just optimize the potential to create those mixed suit pungs. We got the five. So now we can let the three go and the one can go. And now we have five crack pair and we can use any one of these, but we need to let something go. It really doesn't matter. It's arbitrary. Okay, so here's an option now with a six dot. We definitely want to keep going. Like, I, I wouldn't stop the Charleston. We have three discards, and we're in between. We have enough options here, though, with what we have already. I don't remember if a six dot was going around. I don't think so. Probably to mitigate risk a little bit, I would let the six bam go, though, and keep the six dot. So we're not passing a five, six in dots. Okay, no keepers here, so we can just keep going. 
I was hoping we'd get uh, north. Okay, so here we have no keepers at all. Well, yeah, because the five crack is what we're targeting here. We have a five crack there. So now we have really four discards and a hand with no gaps. But I would keep my options open with the four bam and the six dot and just pass two. Because we don't need the six crack with a five crack. If we're playing the noose concealed hand, we have a pung of fives. So we just need a, another pung of number tiles in consecutive run in a different suit. We didn't get it, but I would say we are probably a, at least a contender here. We do have two weaknesses. So I would say we're probably a contender until we get one of one of those weaknesses handled. Even though we have a pair, we have two discards and an option, three discards. We probably could say we're a front runner, but we're playing a concealed hand. So to adjust your expectation, maybe consider yourself a contender until you build the hand a little more. I'd say let's be a contender and just see if we can draw a 4BM6 dot or north. We're going to have to draw because we're concealed. So we, we got a north. Now I would say we're a front runner because we now have that north built up a little bit and we're down to one discard and two, and two options. We need a four bam or a six dot or a joker. We're, we're very close here. But again, we're concealed. We can use jokers though. Don't need a dragon. Don't need a dragon. That's one of our options, but we're concealed. Okay, now we can let that go. So we have two clear discards. We got an east, and I would keep it. We might be able to switch to the first hand. We have two discards for the concealed hand. So we need to look for a four man. Now here's our another option, um, but it's out right there. The three man can go though. So let's just see what happens. That's we're concealed. We're looking for a four man, six man, north south. I think we had every one of those dragons. Okay, that's the second one out. I would let that go now. We're good there. Okay, we'll let that go. Okay, we have one discard here, the east. So we're at 60 tiles, 61 tiles remaining. We have one discard. I'd still say we're a front runner. We can use any number of jokers, but we still need to draw. Don't need a flower. These tiles go first. We need a... I want to keep that east for a little while. Okay, east and west. These tiles are going down. There are two east out, two west. I would probably let that go and just focus on this one. There we go. Okay. So ready to win before the end of the third wall. This is a great place to be. I would say we are confirmed front runner here. We're ready to win on a north or a 4 BM. And no 4 BMs are out yet. Let's hope that we don't have someone playing evens. We may have a contender for the 4 BM because we have two robots with even pumps. They could be doing a 2, 4, 6, 8. And maybe they're using the BAMs. Maybe this player on the left is doing uh, two, three, four, five. Our opponent across from us could be doing three, four, five, six, or four, five, six, seven. So even though they have evens out, they could also be playing consecutive run in our range. So we may need to use this joker here, in which case, let's say we're looking for a north. Either way, north or a four BAM. So we're ready to win.
We're going into the end game now. Well, in this next pick. Joker. We got it. Mahjong. All right. Noose concealed. So even concealed hands, if you've got strength, go for it. And always just pick a plan B so that you could have a switchable option if it doesn't come through. Okay, so let's see. We should be able to play at least two more games. All right, here we go. Let's see. We have, thank you for the kudos. We have one, three, four, eight in BAMs, four, nine in cracks, one, three, four, six, eight in dots. We have a pair of sixes and a pair of eights. So you might immediately be thinking evens, but we have a gap, no two. If we get a seven, we'd be better off to play six, seven, eight, nine. So with that, I would probably focus on the six, eight and let the little numbers go. So a one, three, let's see here. We have, and maybe the nine, because we could do a five, six, seven, eight, if we can get fives and sevens, but we can also play two, four, six, eight, if we get twos. Okay, so we have a four, three can go, there's six, eight, nine. We have an eight here. We have a one. Okay, now one, three, clearly those can go, but we need one more good tile to let go of. One, three, crack. We have four, eight, four, six, eight, nine, four crack, two, four. Let's let the four crack go. Instead of the three crack, let's let the three dot go. That way we're passing at least one of each suit and we're in between two, four, six, eight and six, seven, eight of some kind. You don't have to pick a hand. So don't try not to feel anxious about well, what hand are we playing? We really don't need to know. We're in a need to know basis right now. We don't need to know what hand we're playing because we're gathering. Okay, so we have a nine. We don't need a one. We don't need a dragon. Sometimes it's just easy to pick away at the, the clear discards. I, I like to call those that chaff. It's just clear, unneeded superfluous tiles. There's no way we need a red, no way we need a one. That makes it easy. And then you just maybe whittle down on the others. So really the three crack, that's a clear discard in this case. We do have a little potential for three, six, nine, but not that much. We're better off because of the eight going with two, four, six, eight or six, seven, eight, nine of some kind. Here we go. There's six, seven, eight, nine. Now we have a seven, six, seven, eight, nine, still no two. So you might think, well, do we stop the Charleston because we're in between evens and six, seven, eight, nine? No, we're not going to stop the Charleston because we have no two. We're much better off going with six, seven, eight, nine, and we still don't need to pick a hand. I would continue and do the best I can here. Probably I would let the four go with the eight bam, and then either the seven crack or the nine. We have six, eight in dots. Let's see, maybe we do have that four. If we do get a two bam, we could do two, four in bam, six, eight. So let's let the four dot go. And then since we have an eight, nine, Let's let the nine crack go. Okay, now we have a five, five, six, eight, nine. Be really nice if we can get a seven dot or two bam. We got the three dot back. We don't need these tiles at all. Okay, so we have a six, eight, still no two though. So here's the thing. We didn't see a single two. That to me means these robots, at least one or two of them, 
are playing something with twos, maybe a year hand, like numbers, maybe evens, because we didn't get very many. Uh, we didn't get any set. We got one seven. So I think we have competitors for twos, evens, maybe even sevens here. So I probably, with these tiles, I would probably pass 368. It's It might look a little bit risky, but I think it's worth it in this case. Okay, we did get a 68 in BAMs. All right, let's just see what happens. I would not, I would say we're an underdog because I, I wouldn't even pick a hand yet. I would wait. Okay, now there's a joker. We could maybe use that for a seven and play six, seven, eight, nine, or five through nine. I would probably let the eight and the six go and say we're playing a gap hand. Seven dot would be ideal, but if we also get a two ban, we could play two, four, six, eight, and then use the nine dot as joker bait at 60 tiles. So let's see what happens. I'd say, oh, hi, Wes. Uh, that's all right. We had a couple good games. Uh, thank you. And then let's see. So we're playing a gap hand, either five through nine, six, seven, eight, nine in dots, or maybe two, four, six, eight, if we can get a two ban. Second hand down, or third hand down on the right. We have two discards, but we're in between. So I'd say we're maybe a contender on this one, especially if we can fill fill in a gap. Okay, now here we have four, five, six building, four, five, six. The eight, bam, is a clear discard. So we still don't have to put the hand, but we're tightening up our range. We have four through nine in here. We do have a gap though, no seven. It'd be nice if we could fill a gap so we have a clear direction. We're in between two, four, six, eight, and maybe five through nine in probably dots. Really, the 6 BM probably can go. Really, even the five can go, I think. We got a two crack, not we want a two BM. Okay, now here, we could pung that, and it would be a pung for either hand. We're in between three different hands. Either way, we can pung, because a pung is for every one of those hands. So I'd say we can call. We're playing either two, four, six, eight, sec, uh, third hand down on the right under evens, pung, kong, pung, kong. We're also maybe playing five through nine where the six is a pung. And then we could also maybe play six, seven, eight, nine where the six band or six dot is the first number for a pung. So either way we can use that. So now the kicker is going to be the eight dot, because if we play the first hand, that eight dot is a pung. If we play the second hand down, that eight dot is a pung. If we play two, four, six, eight, it's a kong. So without a two bam, I probably would let it go. I'd rather get a seven dot, I think. Seven dot would be ideal. The five dot is a big weakness if we play that five through nine hand. That's our tile. We're going to let it go. Kong for us. We don't need that. At this point, a two bam probably would be ideal. But if we get a seven or a five, okay, there's the five. So now that takes care of our and we can. That, that joker as the missing seven. And we can use jokers, and I would just commit with that pair now in hand. Um, if, if, I, if you need, okay, Wes has a question. If you needed to use your joker for the six dot, would you have still pumped? No, I would have waited because that was the first one out. There's still more. There's still one more. So I probably would have let it go. But because we could use that punk in three different hands, I called it. And we're still okay. We're playing a gap hand, but we can use jokers. We need a, 
a seven. We did pick up that nine dot, so we still could maybe play that second hand down in one suit, Hong Kong, Hong Kong, and use the five dot as joker bait. Either way, we need the seven dot, so we're playing a gap hand, which is fine. Let's see if we can get a three dot in here. Okay, there's some jokers up for grabs. Now, this robot, I know these are robots, but they, they have intelligence built in. If they have an exposure, a Kong with two jokers at 62 tiles, my guess is they have a well-developed hand because otherwise that that would be very risky to have a Kong with two jokers. So they're likely a front runner. Okay, and somebody just got, Agata just got a joker, the player on the left. They got another joker. Be nice if they make an exposure with jokers. Okay, everybody has one exposure. We're still looking for a seven dot. There it is. All right, we're finally not playing a gap hand. We're in between five through nine. We could Kong that for a pure Kong and then discard the five. I would do it. It's, oops, what happened there? We can Kong. We might as well. It's a pure, oh, they've got a Mahjong. So we got one away. We were playing a gap hand until that very end. Okay, let's, let's see if we can squeeze in one more game. Okay, we have a wide spread here. We have a flower. Well, we have a joker there. Uh, flower. Then we have west, red, four, five, seven, and bams. Five, seven, and cracks. One, three, six, eight, nine, and dots. If this were your hand, what category would you focus on? We're not talking about a hand. What category would you focus on? And what would be your first three discards? Odds. Evelyn says odds. I would focus on either odds or five, six, seven, eight. So I would discard West, one, and probably the dragon. Focus on, let's see. Yeah, I think I would do that and focus on either big odds, five, seven, nine, or five, six, seven, eight. We do have three, four, five, six in here. Really, the the strength is going to be with either the fives or the sevens because we have two of each. Awesome. Good job, Jane. That's what I would do, too. Okay, there's our first mul two multiples now. We have a three dot pair and a five dot pair. So this is where I would just reassess completely, start from scratch, because we now have two multiples. So whatever we do, we're gonna use the three dot and the five bam. Three, five, those are odds. We could maybe try for the concealed hand. We could maybe do Let's see here, five, seven, three, maybe something with little odds, maybe something with, let's see here, with the four, three, four, five of some kind, really the seven crack, six, eight, nine, and dots are not going to be useful with a three dot and a five band. So I'm thinking either the concealed odd hand or three, four, five. Two, three, four, five. If we can get a two dot, maybe. Let's pass two bam, nine dot seven. Okay, so here's a two crack, one dot. 
So we have some little odds in here. Here's a green dragon. I would probably let the seven go at this point. We have two, three, four, five, a dragon. Let's see. That six is not helpful at all. Really the two crack with a five. We have a five band pair. That should take really the biggest priority. 3.5. So really that two crack is not helpful. Because we need it, we need to be able to use the three dot and the five band. So that two crack, that's not useful whatsoever. Neither is the dragon, actually. All right, now here's a three. We have another multiple in here. One dot three dot. Okay, so now I would definitely keep going. We've got how else we can pass? We have one, three, four, five, three, five, one, three, five. Lots of one, three, five, little odds. Okay, now this is a little bit risky here. Seven, six, nine. This four, bam. Let's see, we have one, three, th one, three, five, gap hand, second hand down under odds. We could do one, three, dot, three, five, crack. Really that four, bam. That would probably mitigate the risk a little bit. Okay, so we picked up two, two, three, five, two, nine can go. I would risk that six. Okay, we have a five bam. Looks like we're probably playing a gap hand again. West two, eight, that's not bad. Okay, so it would be really nice to get a three bam in here. That red dragon, we may even be able to use. Here's a two dot. We have one, two, three, five bam pung, though. We have one, three, five, or one, two, three of some kind. We're in between two categories, and we have one discard. So I would say we're an underdog until we make a choice. We have extra tiles here. Probably the three, five, and cracks will go. We don't need a big number. It'd be really nice if we can get a three BAM in here. There is that fifth hand down under odds that we could play, even with that red dragon. If we can get the three BAM. Here's a two now, though. One, two, three. You know what? It would be nice if we can get a four crack. We might be able to play the fourth hand down under consecutive run. We'd have to throw away the one dot, but we could do single pair Pung, Kong four, crack Kong five. So we're going to keep an eye on the five bam. We may be playing a gap hand. If we go with one, two, three, four, five, or if we do one, three, five, we can let the two dot be Joker bait. We don't need eight. Either way, we really don't need that flower. So we should probably let that go first. And we just got a flower. I would reassess because now there's a new multiple. I would probably play one, two, three Kongs. Let the red dragon go. Okay, there's a five, six, but we have no four. So one, two, three, and one suit with flowers is probably the strongest. Otherwise, we have a gap hand. There's our three ban for one, three, five, but we're really closer to consecutive run. Oh, well, that's an interesting tile right there. If we get a four dot or another dragon, we can maybe play the concealed hand. Okay, now here we have to make a choice because we could Kong that for that fifth hand down on, uh, on the left. Other, otherwise, we're playing a gap hand. Let's go ahead and call because we have a hand with no gaps. Let's let the five bam go and see if someone takes it. No. Okay, now the uh, this white dragon is going to be risky. 
if we hold on to it. So I think we should let that go. Nobody wanted the five BAM, so we can escalate those as discards. Three crack, nobody wanted either. Okay, now there's a couple of jokers up for grabs. They got a joker already. That would be the player across from us. Now with an eight BAM Kong, I do not want to hold nines. So we're going to expedite this nine crack now. They could be doing evens or maybe six, seven, eight. But because it's a Kong of eights with jokers, I don't want to hold nines. Proximity tiles. Anything around that eight BAM Kong, if you don't need those tiles, escalate them as discards. So we're going to let that go. We did get a keeper here. They could be playing like numbers, but they didn't take the eight. Okay, that's our tile, but we're not ready for it. We're going to need a joker. Okay, now seven crack is out. Five bam, nobody wanted. Three bam, no, or three crack, nobody wanted. We should all be fine for discards. There we go. We have we were playing evens. Okay, I think we can squeeze in one more game. We have a odd mix suit hand over there, but we got pretty close to one, two, three Kongs. Okay, so let's see. Last game. We have pairs that don't go together here with the current tiles. Flower, East, one, two, seven, eight, and Bams. One, two, seven, and Cracks with a pair of ones and a pair of sevens. And then we have a six, eight, and Dots. Just for time, I'll go ahead and speed through this. If, these, if this were my hand, I would whittle first rather than pick a hand. So the East can go with seven, eight in here. Probably the eight dot can go. We have one, two, one, two. We have seven, eight. I would probably let the eight bam and the six dot go for more defense. And I would say probably one, two is better than seven, eight. There's a one and a red dragon. Oh, but look, we have seven, eight paired up now. Okay, seven, eight paired up. We have one, two dragon. One, two, one, two. So we have to make a choice. One, two, one, two has way more tiles. So let's let the eight go. Go with most of your tiles. There's a three and a three. We have one, two, three, and we have tiles we can pass. Okay, so here's a five, one through five, no four, but that's all right. Although here we're going to keep going, but we've got two wins. I wouldn't pass both of those. And here I'd probably let something in here go, the five with a one crack pung, one, three, five, one, three dot, three dot. Yeah, that three. Well, we do have a hand in here with no gaps. One, two, three, mix suit Kongs. Okay, here we go. Here's a four dot. We have one, two, three, four, no gaps. Five bam. Oh, there's a one dot now. Five bam there. Okay, north can go. We have one, two, crack, three, four dot, no gaps. One, two, three, flower, no gaps. Either way, we didn't use the five or the one dot. Three dot came in. I would probably let the one, two go and focus on one, two, three, four cracks and dots. Or we could do one, two, three mix suit Kongs. Either way, we now have three discards. So we can do one crack, two, bam, three dot and leverage the multiples. Okay, no keepers. We have three discards and two Potential hands were in one category, which is nice. We could do one, two, three, four of some kind. We're in between the, let's see, the fifth hand down in one suit, one, two, three crack, 
or second hand down on the right, one, two, three, four, Punk Kong, Punk Kong, three discards. I'd say we're probably a contender, even though we're in between. We may have Joker bait. We can definitely let these wins go. Okay, that's our tile if we play one, two, three, four. So that, that would mean we'd need a Joker. So I'd probably now for sure two four dots are out i'd let it go i would say one two three mix suit kongs or one two three and one suit we have four discards so i'd say we're a contender still in between there's a three bam flower I would probably say one, two, three, mix suit Kongs. That would leverage the one crack and the three dot. Five crack pair, that, that's Joker bait right there. Really, this three bam is not helpful. We're, we can do one, two, three in cracks or one, two, three, mix suit. So we're playing the fifth hand down, one or the other. We have three discards with Joker bait. So I'd say we're probably a contender still. Okay, nine crack. We can let that go. There's a Joker. Oh, they got a Joker already. Jeez. They just really, yikes. <laughs> they really go after those Jokers. Well, that was quick. Five, seven, nine, dragon. All right. So we came together pretty quickly. We were a contender. I think that's going to do it, though, for this live stream. Thank you so much for being here for the live stream where we talked about Charleston options, exercising Charleston options. If you're new to the game or if you're just trying to build your skills, consider watching the repost so that you can see the presentation where we talked about passing blind, stopping the Charleston, mitigating risk, assessing risk, and making a decision based on the strength of your hand. I hope, thank you, Wes. I hope you found it helpful. We'll be back again in an hour for the next nitty gritty Let's Play live stream prime time. And let me just tell you the topic. Let's see here. I don't remember what the topic is. Matrix. strategy by wall. If you're a beginner, you should come back. Intermediate and experienced players, come on back because we're going to talk about hop toys, strategy by wall. Does anybody have any questions? If not, I'll go ahead and sign off. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, consider subscribing. Click the little gray bell if you do. That way you'll get notification for when I post new videos and you won't miss an opportunity to learn a new strategy or pick up an insight to the game that could give you an advantage at the table. Between now and the next video, may all your picks be keepers.